Welcome to another episode of the Idiot Section, coming to you today from the Olympic Village in Sochi, Russia. I am your host, Senior Esteban, and we have been here since the opening ceremonies last Friday and have witnessed firsthand some of the issues that have plagued other members of the Olympic Village. Many of the issues are the result of the Russian government attempting to build hotels we are staying in too quickly with too little money and using unskilled and unpaid workers. The beauty of this plan is that if you complain about working 20 hours a day and not getting paid for it, they ship you back home and bring in another busload of unskilled workers that they won't pay either. Good thinking, if you ask me. Now, just to give you an idea as to what we are dealing with here, Number one, you cannot flush toilet paper. So when you are done with your business, you have to dispose of all your paperwork into a bin next to the toilet. This will then be collected by all the non-metal winners once the Olympics are over. Number two, the tap water is the color of cloudy tea, and no one seems to know why. But this is okay because even Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, says his tap water is tea colored too. Just think, we have the same crappy water the president of Russia has. More like Vladimir Putin. Mm. Now the cleaning staff may or may not lock your room after they clean it. I guess that is not a required part of their job. Now, for those of you who like honey and you request it with your meal, you may be lucky enough to have it come with a real bee inside of it. Mmm, yummy. Now, sometimes the bathroom doors lock and will not let you out of the toilet area. Good thing that they are made of cardboard so that you can kick right through them. Just don't expect it to be fixed before you leave. One of the other issues we're dealing with is stray dogs wander the Olympic Village in packs and attack and eat small Olympic athletes if they are walking alone. <laughs> At least they don't touch their medals. Also, there is free internet, although you need to download Russian viruses that will steal your financial user IDs and passwords. How else do you expect them to pay for the Olympics? One of the other charming features of the Olympics is that there are three Russian mascots this year, a rabbit, a leopard, and a polar bear. While the rabbit and leopard mascots turned out okay, the polar bear costume didn't quite translate as well from its conceived counterpart, causing it to be named Nightmare Bear. And for those of you who can see this, and we'll put it on the site, it's pretty scary. Actually, now that I'm looking at the bear, it reminds me of Abbott from Abbott and Costello. <laughs> you know, yeah. what, you yeah. know what? It looks like it happened. Hey, he yeah, had bear. a he got his food with a bee in it. Yeah, <laughs> he got stung. <laughs> he's he like, oh. he, swelled, he swelled up and <laughs> oh, oh bother. Yeah. Oh bother. <laughs> the other thing is Russian prostitutes that are covered with cold sores. Or he had one. Or he yeah. Or one or up. and, and her name was by, bee. <laughs> and followed by flies, swear by Lenin's tomb that they are as clean as a Russian snowstorm. It's They're so as good clean. as our water. And number ten, <laughs> if you thing. are gay, Russia forbids you to touch any children. So since I don't like children anyway, so when a little crumb snatcher comes over to me, I just tell them I am gay, and they run away screaming. <laughs> Gay. Now, this is the idiot section, and I, with my co hosts, Kyle and Steve O, could give two unflushed shits about the Olympics uh, or the living conditions being faced by the Western journalist who's whining and complaining about not having the same amenities in Russia that they have at home have fallen in our deaf ears. If you don't like it, by all means, feel free to leave. <laughs> Vladimir Putin. Uh. 
From what I have read, the inconveniences the Western journalists will face for the next two weeks are what the Russian people live with every single day. If anything, it should give you some perspective on what life is really like somewhere else and will hopefully make you appreciate what you do have in your home countries. So stick that in your balalakas and smoke it. By the way, a balalaka is a guitar-like musical instrument with a triangular body and two or three or four strings popular in Russia and the other Slavic countries. The more you know. Do -do -do -do. Now, what I'd like to do is tonight's idiot section is dedicated to the memory of one of the greatest comedy legends to ever grace the TV screen, Sid Caesar, who passed away today at the age of 91. Sid Caesar, whose clever, unrestrained comedy on such programs as Your Show of Shows and Caesar's Hour helped define the 1950s golden age of television. Both shows featured writers who became famous in their own right, including Neil Simon, Carl Reiner, Mel Brooks, and Larry Gelbart, to name a few. Even Woody Allen contributed to a Caesar's comedy as a writer from one of his specials. Sid Caesar also appeared in a number of films, including It's a Mad, 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 Mad World in 1963, Airport 1975, and Greece as the coach in 1978. So weird. He was born Isaac Sidney Caesar in 1922 and was part of a pioneering group of personalities who helped establish television in its early days. While many comedians such as Jack Benny and Fred Allen more or less transferred their radio shows to the new medium in Milton Berle's Texaco Star Theater was essentially the same vaudeville act he did but on a small screen, Caesar's show of shows presented movie parodies, wordless pantomimes, and brisk routines between the host and his co-star. Sid Caesar was a very versatile actor and he could take on many roles. In one instance, he hosted Saturday Night Live in 1983 and was named an honorary member of the Not Ready for Primetime Players at the conclusion of the show, and he was the only non-SNL cast member to ever earn that tribute. Among his honors are two Emmys, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Television Critics Association, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. When asked by the Archive of American Television how he'd like to be remembered, he responded with six words. I brought laughter to the world, he said. Thank you for that laughter, Sid, and God rest you. You will be missed. You will be. Now, since our last show, the Groundhog did see his shadow. <laughs> Let's get him. <clears throat> so six more weeks of winter for us all, even though it's supposed to be 88 this weekend in Arizona. Uh. Besides that, the Seattle Seahawks also soundly demolished the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl. And perhaps next time, Denver will light up their legal weed after the game rather than before. We got the munchies. I was going to win the game, but then I got high. <laughs> I was going to beat the Seahawks too, but then I got high. Ba -ba -da -da -da. And now everybody's yelling at me, and I don't know why. Because I'm, I'm high. Because I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. We're a horse. Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre's not even on the Broncos. But he's green to me. <laughs> now, as a customer service announcement, and in order to cover our own asses from being sued, the following disclaimer will now be read. The discussions, comments, ad libs, and off the cuff remarks in the show are the opinions and beliefs, as uneducated as they may be, of the participants and do not speak for nor represent the views, opinions, or philosophies of the Four Eyed Radio Network, the Socially Awkward Studios, or any of the sponsors associated with them. Furthermore, any and all celebrity impressions or attempts at impressions or voices you may hear on the show are for entertainment purposes only and do not signify an endorsement of the show by said celebrity. This show is for entertainment purposes only and please no wagering. As always, our opening musical intro today is called Dancing Ivories, also known as Soupy's Theme, and was written by Al Mortimer, a pen name for Henry Jerome, and was used as a musical intro to the Soupy Sales Show in the 1960s, and again for his show in the 1970s. Suck it, SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud. This is our 17th show for the Four Eyed Radio Network, or The Fern, and we are just two days away from Valentine's Day, a day that I and I am sure many other men 
dread more than going to the dentist. Now, I'm sure that all the women out there who are patiently listening to my melodious voice are shocked and appalled at my saying that. But seriously, all the florists, candy makers, stuffed toy manufacturers, jewelers, and greeting card companies have mass marketed this holiday to the point where I and many other men like me, we do enough to make sure our sweetie knows we love them come Valentine's Day. Now, as far as Valentine's Day goes, it is celebrated on the Feast of St. Valentine, who was widely recognized as a third century Roman saint on February 14th, who ate the heart of children. and has been associated <laughs> since the Feast. Middle Ages with the tradition of court, I love you, Saint Valentine. courtly right. love. Courtney love? Like the actress? No, like, like in, the woman who killed Kurt Cobain? No, like in I'm courting you and I uh, love you. Well, that's a lot nicer than no. I think the other version. I like yeah. the other version better now. We got a vampire kind of slash St. Valentine. <laughs> oh, we got a new movie, St. Valentine's nice. Day, Vampire Hunter. A blah. A blah. <laughs> oh, I love you too. <laughs> now, in a text called the Nuremberg Chronicle, written around 1493, which was a tad before my time, it says that Valentinus, who was a Roman priest, martyred during the reign of Claudius II, also known as Claudius Gothicus. Valentinus was arrested and imprisoned upon being caught marrying Christian couples and otherwise aiding Christians who were at the time being persecuted by Claudius in Rome. Although helping Christians at this time was considered a crime, Claudius took a liking to this prisoner until the dumbass tried to convert the emperor, whereupon this priest was condemned to death. He was beaten with clubs and stones, However, when that failed to kill him, I'm still okay. So <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, I feel pretty good. All right. I feel loved. Well, when that failed, they took him outside the square and they beheaded him. Ooh. What a with that lovely scene being described, Valentine's Day has also been associated with the 1929 murder of seven <laughs> mob associates as part of a prohibition era conflict between two powerful criminal gangs in Chicago. The South Side Italian Gang, led by hey! Al Capone, and the North Side Irish Gang, led by Bugs Morin, known as the Valentine's Day Massacre. So, realistically, the celebration of St. Valentine's Day could have gone either way. <laughs> if the NRA were smart, they would jump all over this bad boy and push for more gun sales on St. Valentine's Day. That I could get behind. You want to... <laughs> it's like, you want to show your loved ones... You want to make people's head rolls? You want to take down mob bosses? Get a gun. For Happy Valentine's Day. You know what Claudius's uh, Gothicus's eighth grandson was called? I give up. Claudius Octopuses. Because <laughs> he was eight. Oh, I see. So, Kyle, what have you been up to since <laughs> the last show? Well, I finally got my Wii U. It came in the mail. Three. Days. It said it was going to come by March 3rd, and it came, like, Monday. So, that's not March 3rd. And I was really happy with it. Uh, it actually came with a screen protector and a bigger stylus. It gave me like an extra stylus. Uh, and it came, it was the deluxe model, comes with one game and has like the charging stand and all that fun stuff. Uh, and I like it a lot. Like uh, what was nice about it was I hadn't gotten to play it when the day I got it. And then I got it set up yesterday. And then last night a little bit when we were watching shows, what I like about it, it has a screen on it. So even though someone's watching television, you can play on it while you're commuting. I was able to search the web on it. I was able to play a lot of like old Nintendo games on it. Uh, I have like a huge wish list because there's tons of all these games. There's like Super Castlevanias on there. A whole bunch of games I never played. And then the best part, <laughs> which is the main reason I told Lindsay I'm in love with the machine now, is that you can take it with you when you're going to the bathroom. So <laughs> instead of going in there and reading a book, I can play Mario. And I can sit there for as long as I want for hours on end. Great. Good thing you have two bathrooms exactly, in your place. Yeah, huh? Exactly. I was going to play my Wii, but then I got high. <laughs> but it's great, though. Yeah, I like it a lot. It works Good. really well. You can uh, you save anywhere. So yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So you're a happy little boy, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty slick. I like it a lot. Good. Hey, Steve, what about you? What have you been up to the last two weeks? Uh, plotting my demise. Oh, you don't have to go so far as to do that. Oh, but it's gonna be fantastic. It's already on the downswing. That's it. That's all you've been doing. I got nothing. How's it going? Nothing. Well, either. you know, well, apparently my blood pressure's high. 
Yeah, which you gotta get high. <laughs> I was going to get you know what? I, I a burger, think, but I, my blood pressure got high. I think I'm just gonna do that. I think I'm gonna. Chris Murray was talking about it. He almost got his like card for uh, marijuana. Yeah, for marijuana. Maybe I'll just get that and just like Didn't you know, I'll just do a record. You know, like I'm not gonna smoke and then go to work. Or recreational, yeah, yeah, recreational. Yeah, I gotcha. You know. yeah. well, what you should do is go to Colorado. Colorado is that's really, true. Really high. And yeah, they got but higher elevation. You know what would too. happen to me though? I'd get so stoned, and they'd be like, "Where's South Park?" That's actually wow. there. They actually make an amusement park. No, shut up. Don't get my hopes up. <laughs> but I heard, yeah, the Can higher I elevation run? too. So you gotta watch out for that. Well, since our last show well, was dead, uh, yeah, well, you the yeah. Super Bowl was a waste of time. Yeah, well, even the commercials weren't that great this year. I no. only thought they one, had one or two were I thought, okay, I thought and some one of the other ones. Commercial was the best commercial out of all of them, but the only reason why they did that commercial is because I think they're going out of business this year. Was Radio Shack? Radio Shack, yeah, yeah, that was a good commercial. I did like that one. Other than that, and a lot of the Doritos well. ones weren't too bad. Like they were kind of like yeah, because I mean obviously yeah. they didn't make them; they were made by people who were. I know. I wish I could be a company, be like, we don't, you guys make them. Well, I thought yeah. it was great. Well, it's kind of like how they do reality TV. They spend about you know a quarter of the money they would if they had a real show, right? Because they don't where they had to hire real people to be real actors. Hey, next year we should submit one where Kyle and I will just sit there beating the crap out of each other. And then yeah, at the, just, at the end it's just Doritos. Yeah, <laughs> at the end, yeah, they have, to have Toby pop up. Cool ranch. I'm like, all right. <laughs> You're well, in. well You're one in. commercial <laughs> I took particular offense to was Bob uh-huh. Dylan stumping for Chrysler. After all these years of his songs, ranting against corporate America and how badly it treated its workers and all this other stuff, it's like, Mm. oh, guess now, oh, everything's America, America. I guess now he needs the money. I guess so. They were talking about that, too, on a lot of of artists. They were talking about, like, Bob Kane is especially notorious for this. When he was making uh, Batman, he'd have ghost artists. That would do them for him, and then he would just take credit for like the work that they had done, right? And he'd pay them a pretty penny, but he he didn't care as long as they were there was money involved, which is why like he loved like the Batman TV show because it was just bringing in all the money with all the yeah royalty checks and stuff. So like he didn't mind it, but that was the same thing. Like oh, your your sense of an artist gets askew when they start throwing like buckets of money at right. you. Well, it was like anything. I mean, for I, for a while there, I started hearing Who songs just about in every commercial. Oh it's yeah, like, NCIS and what? all this. What? <laughs> well, was it? Didn't they do that with uh, like the year before with uh, what was his name? Clint Eastwood was did the crisis. He's like America's coming back. I'm gonna talk to a stool after this. It's gonna be great, America. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean that's a little different because he's an actor. He's from Detroit. Like that kind of made a yeah, little yeah. bit more you sense. You know what? Even better, what they should have done since uh, Chrysler's in Detroit, they should have just gotten RoboCop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the guy went, doing that. And he goes, "Oh, buy this, buy this buy car." Buy the Chrysler, or <laughs> yeah, I'll come I and will kill you. Kill. Halt, yeah. citizen. They're alive. You need a halt, citizen. Kill. Buy this Chrysler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was kind of it. It was almost like, you know, I I, I think uh, many years ago when Bob Dylan used to be like a folk singer with a acoustic guitar. And then what had happened is he showed up at the Newport uh, Music Festival with an electric guitar. And a lot of people, I think he got booed off yeah. the stage because of that. And now he's, uh, now he's, I realize the power. Now he's being a salesman for Chrysler. <laughs> I can't just wait. In another five years, you'll go to a show, you'll go to a, a Chrysler car lot and he'll be there trying to sell. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get a, hey, get hey, a, hey, hey, this hey, car. Hey, 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 <laughs> well, it's funny we were talking know, about to that. every key, turn, turn, turn. <laughs> I wish I would have spent my money better. You know, the AC, my friend, is blowing in this car. The AC is blowing in this car. You know, just dust in the wind. <laughs> That's not even you. No, yeah, that is. Yeah, exactly. I'll steal it anyway. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. It's just a teenage. It works for them. It's just a teenage yeah. wasteland. All right, get out of here. <laughs> All right. So, Kyle, you got a funny story for us this week? Do I it. Do it now. Do, do it, it now. See if I can find it. it was funny. basically, uh, it was that story. I don't know if you guys saw that oh, thing. Yeah, about that was the... here in uh, Arizona, was so it? So, this woman was like, her, was, was like closer to Tucson, but literally, like, I guess I read more into it. So, I guess what the whole situation was, it was a friend of a family. She was kind of flirting with the 15-year-old son. Uh, the mom even kind of knew, like, some of them was up, and she said, look, just stay away from my kid. Like, I don't want you anywhere around him. I know what you're up to. Like, stay away. And, like, I guess the mom had to work, single mom, so she has to work at night. And so the woman came over, and, like, they had, I guess, uh, some fun time. They were punching the monkey, as they say on the what? radio. Oh, so G punching the monkey. Punching the monkey. Oh, that was man. spanking the monkey. Well, when you have two parties, it's not just spanking. You're, like, punching the monkey. What if you took the monkey out for a nice dinner but never called him again? That 
dating the monkey. That's not <laughs> okay. a not punching monkey. So uh, poor monkey. <laughs> yeah, poor the monkey always Aww. getting abused. So literally, she came home. She heard a lot of ruckus out of his room. So when she opened the door, all she saw was a naked woman jump out of the second story window, land on the ground, hurt herself like she heard the cracking she of broke like, her, her ankle, ankle yeah. and she fled. And then literally like 30 minutes later, the woman comes back completely dressed, is banging on her door, and is like, "Oh, I broke my ankle somehow. Can you take me to the hospital?" And so that is like through the course of a couple days investigation, mm-hmm. the son and the mom were able to say, no, that was the woman who was right. doing this. So she, I don't think she really got charged with anything sexually related, only because they said because it was so much consensual, really right. wasn't like yeah. forced well, upon them. Like so first statu- it's consensual it's as still, a 50. Yeah, I mean, as, let's as face it, any 15-year-old yeah. would have sex with it, even a monkey. Yeah. I mean, Especially not only would they spank well, the monkey, when you see the picture of this woman, and like, no. I mean, even if you see the picture of this woman, like, you, you, this kid's screwed. Like, yeah, if she ever was like kind of trying to pick up on like some girls in high school, like, nah, it's like your taste is like they're gonna see what you got. Yeah, and then yeah. it's just like, no, nope. or it's <laughs> I'm not gonna boost interested. his morale because people. Well, like, probably boosted his bang- morale. Why is, he ba- yeah. why is he banging haggard chicks? Oh, I could do better. I could do hag- better than haggard chicks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the it was monkey's pretty bad. like, I could do better than a haggard chick. You never called me back. You never called me back, bro. We went out for wings. I thought we had a great time. Come on, man. Come on. You don't even tweet me anymore. Come on, Brad. You even know how to tweet. <laughs> yeah. This, so anyway, this poor this woman is probably going to be in English. jail for a while. Yeah. yeah so that. she'll be away for a while. Yeah, quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, like when you see the picture of this woman, you guys can find her on AZ Family. Yeah, I just yeah, saw Haggard, the horrible. When much uh, sums it up. when she uh, jumped out of the window, did it freeze frame? Be like, now that woman <laughs> jumping out of the window. She better hope. Oh there's... no, there's a woman jumping out of window. She better hope that she can grow and wings in the next few naked. minutes. Nope. Or she's going to be her. <laughs> but the neighbor across the street. Uh, hello, nine one one. Yeah, there's a woman Flying jumping. Nakedly. A naked woman jumping <laughs> out of the window. However, if I I filmed it enough, I run it backwards. It looks like you jump. <laughs> yeah. Woo. In and out. Oh, that'd be just like that perfect uh, with Jay and Silent uh, or Dogma, where he's all like, "Naked guys just don't fall out of the sky." And then, and then awesome. Chris Rock falls. Out. He's like, "Big breasted naked women don't fall out of the sky." Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. So that was my. And it's funny because I remember you had talked about it on one show where it's like, yeah, literally the uh, criminality. And idiocy kind of goes hand in hand, and so like lo and behold, like we just keep getting all yeah, these beautiful gifts of I, I've, craziness. I've noticed that we don't have any smart like this is the weird part. We read about outside it, of Rob Ford, but we well, read, yeah. well we read about like you know you read about these super criminals in comic books and everything like that. And I'm like, why does anybody just like go, diamond like, heists and things like, like that? We're all over right. in yeah, Europe yeah, yeah. over here. We have but, like you know I wanted to make a sandwich and I robbed a bank. Or like the guy. Well, speaking of which, the, I, I, I you funny, do funny you should well, say that. Dad brought up the, the a couple of episodes back where the guy. Guys all like he Instagram is gun collection or whatnot. That's yeah, yeah it's like, it was just all like <laughs> yeah, the picture. But of it's him just like, like it's like where it's like I think the Joker was right. We need a better high class of criminals. Right. And we yeah. Need someone to yeah, give it to. Well, I think we just found him. Somebody to get behind and somebody to <laughs> to back to champion for us. Well, actually, thinking of criminal behavior, uh, you know, I believe that most of our idiot stories do come from criminal behavior that is less than brilliant to say the least. Now, from the Huffington Post comes this story. A 22-year-old El Jabel resident who drunkenly set fire to an Aspen sports bar <laughs> while making nachos was sentenced to three years community service Monday for an unrelated crime. It appears that he will serve the sentence concurrently with a community corrections team received for his nacho incident. The really Aspen Daily nachos. News reports that the man's nacho quest began after drinking 40 ounces of Jägermeister nice. and 16 beers. This bro knows how to party. Yeah, really. Drunk and hungry, the man first searched for food at the El Jebel City Market and Wendy's, but unfortunately both were closed. Undeterred, he broke into the fine line bar and grill, proceeded to drink more, and then make nachos. He placed onions, cheese, bacon, pepperoni, and four bags of tortilla chips <laughs> into the pizza oven, which caught fire and triggered a fire suppression system. When the owners of the fine line reviewed the security footage the following day, the one employee recognized the 22-year-old, and the police apprehended him after he attempted to flee but tripped on his baggy clothing. <laughs> Pants on the ground. Pants on the ground. You know, it's kind of sad because I kind of want to know how those. Uh, yeah, how were the, they? How those nachos? They're a little bad. soggy. No, uh, they're a little burned. <laughs> A little soggy and little, little crispy, hot. I think. I mean, come on, seriously, you had pepperoni. Like, like, did he just like start grabbing stuff and he throwing must, it on Yeah, there? whatever they had on the bar. He th- I'm goodness. surprised he didn't throw some deviled eggs on there. <laughs> I was looking, man. 
this little uh you know it's funny i was i was checking like some other sites to see what other kind of funny stories people have and this is from joker's revenge <sighs> Some guy was saying that this week all our office phones went dead and he had to contact the telephone repair people. They promised to be out between 8 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock that evening. Now, the guy asked him, he says, hey, could you give me a smaller time window? And the gentleman said, oh, would you like us to call before we come out? And the guy says, I don't think you understand that. We're not going to be able to do that since our phones weren't working. So then he requested that we report any future outages by email, which wasn't working either. Wap, wap, wap. I kind of like this one. This is from a news agency in Canada. Now, Ooh. besides now besides a ship full of rats that they sent out to sea. Here we go. In November, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that obese people have the right to two seats on a flight for the price of one within Canada. Ooh, he there. The high court declined to hear an appeal by Canadian Airlines of a decision by the Canadian Transport Agency that people who are functionally disabled by obesity <laughs> deserve to have two seats <laughs> for one fare. Why can't they just Okay, I'm I'm sorry, but I, if you're going to be that overweight, like they we should just be able to allow to be called you fat. Like I, I'm sorry, saying functional disability. No, no, they're functionally by disabled by obesity. No, they're they're fat. No, you're, you're, we you're we fat. have to come up with another name. Like we can't call kids like you can't call people uh was it, you know, the the R word. You can't call them retarded. You have oh, to call them radical. Radical. <laughs> you have to say like mental, <laughs> radical. radical man. Oh, you can't say that. That's our no, word. Uh, mentally, you know, handicapped or, you know, disabled, right. you know, something like that. So we have to come up with another Maybe instead of obese people, we'll call them double people. <laughs> yeah, double trouble. Double people. Here comes double trouble. Well, the airlines so we'll had lost the an appeal at the Federal Court of Appeal in May and had a, sought to launch a fresh appeal to the Supreme Court. Now, the court's decision not to hear a new appeal means that the one-person, one-fair policy stands. Aha. The appeal had been launched by Air Canada, Air Canada Jazz yeah, and WestJet. Hey, 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 <laughs> I'm flying today. Hey, hey, hey. So I'm cool, going to give me two seats for one. Well, it's funny because hey, we were talking about, hey, cool I think dance. we were talking about at the lunch that time about like the Disney princesses, how there's not a thin, there's a, all thin princesses. Right. And there's that. I was like, they're not thin, they're healthy. They're active, they're doing stuff, that's why they're thin. And the, the whole mindset of like, oh, well, that's not fair to me because I'm fat. Well, I just want to say that the inventors of Doritos have unleashed a snack at 7-Eleven for these people, where it's a mozzarella stick filled with cheese, deep fried, and the outer layer of whatever goodness it's supposed to be is Doritos. You get four to a pack, and each Why one is like about, about this now? because they're testing it in in, a, in Colorado, surprisingly, uh, for people who have the munchies. They're about 500 calories a stick, and there's four in a pack oh my because God. of like how just That's like a these whole are. day's meal. So I'm sorry, but you cannot have the argument that we're setting a bad example when there's food like that being me made to I just serve. figured it out yeah, what we no. can call fatties. Yeah. We'll call them grimaces. Oh, there you go. Grimaces. The grimace. Ooh. <laughs> don't grimace over the Yeah, don't soup. grimace over this grimace. <laughs> Knock it off, man. Well, I mean, look at their mayor, Mar Rob Ford. That's maybe why they uh, decided to uh, enact this. He's like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> He's like, yeah. shit, I, I got to get out of here. <laughs> I need me a big. <laughs> That'll be the price of two cents. I hope that Ron Floor learns how to grow wings or his fat ass is paying for two tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a story now from a small rural area that recently had a new neighbor moved in. Chicago. Who called the local township administrative office to request the removal of the deer crossing sign on his road. The reason he was concerned that many deer were being hit by cars right by the sign, so he no longer wanted them to cross there. <laughs> could you move it? So they won't yeah, so this way they'll move. Yeah, they'll cross <laughs> down there more. I didn't know deers could read that well. Yeah, hey, oh, it says we can cross here. Yeah, you see the guys going like the deers going, hey, hey, I'm crossing here. <laughs> yeah, wow. Don't you see the sign? I'm doing my part. What an asshole, God. <laughs> yeah. That was a donkey riding a car. Yeah. <laughs> what an ass. Yeah. Well, I recently went to my local Taco Bell, oh, oh. and I ordered a taco. Mm -hmm. And then when the individual behind the counter, I says, oh, could you give me uh, minimal lettuce? And he goes, sorry, dude, but they only have iceberg. No, minimal. You really toss that joke. Toss it. Well, we'd like to move to a section that's Bacon. called News Stories, Making Headlines. Wow. What do you have, Kyle? 
I have this one. It's pretty cool. So Pro Am has been doing awesome commercials lately, where they show the guy jumping out of the atmosphere, falling like 700 miles an hour, with the camera being so sharp, you can actually see like space dust and space debris, and it stays focused the whole time down. And usually, like with these digital cameras, like they crap out after a certain while, especially like coming right. from like not only going at such a rapid speed, but also going from like it out of space to in our atmosphere like you'd figure something would happen to it but it worked just fine so there's a video out now of this pro-am camera guy that he's jumping he's got skydiving on a plane and he has it i guess taped to him but as he jumps the camera falls like it, it's it's rolling right and it falls off his chest so you see it's spinning in the air you see the whole rotation so it's a little bit like whoa it's a little bit of a trip yeah it kind of make you sick to your stomach it hits the ground so not only does it hit the ground at a high speed and it's still recording <laughs> it lands in like a pig trough so that this pig is coming over <laughs> Pig, right yeah, now. pig comes over to see what it is and starts trying to eat it. So then, like, a lot of jokes are going out there because it fell from the sky that it's thinking it's like an angry bird <laughs> and it's like trying to take it out. <laughs> and you can actually like see like its teeth and yeah, it's yeah. like so trying it's to go scary. like over and eat it. So we'll post a video on the page when we uh, get the show out, uh, going. But yeah, it's pretty slick because like it keeps the resolution, it keeps everything, and like the detail on it is insane. It's imagining like falling, hitting the ground, getting chewed on, and it's still like it's still recording. And it's still recording. Yeah, it's still pretty working, good. So definitely. very impressive. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So I'll post the video though because it's pretty funny because it just sits there for a while looking up at the sky. <laughs> you just take this big comes over and he's like, hey, like this, but he's just like, like hey, that looks good enough to eat. <laughs> Pooh bear. So. Well, I got to tell you, last week the all women Wesley College outside of Boston, Massachusetts, Hi, installed a new statue on the lawn of a middle-aged man <laughs> sleepwalking <laughs> through this. the snow in his underwear. <laughs> It was a creation that was installed near the campus center in order to draw attention to the upcoming new gravity art exhibit. Mm, unfortunately, okay. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the sleepwalker statue hasn't been well received by the female students at all. As of this writing, there are well over 100 signatures calling for its removal from the campus. Now, some of the comments that were made include this highly lifelike sculpture has, within just a few hours of its outdoor installation, become a source of apprehension, fear, and triggering thoughts regarding sexual assault for many members of the campus and community. While it may appear humorous or thought-provoking to some, <laughs> it has already become a source of undue stress for many Wesley College students the majority of whom live, study, and work in this space. Now, said one English professor, who's a female, I think it's meant to be off-putting. It's a schlumpy guy in underpants in an all-woman environment. Now, from what I could say, if the women who see the statue were smart, they should use it as a learning tool to envision what a future husband may look like and choose their mate accordingly. Fortunately, the exhibit ended on February 11th. However, I think the damage to Valentine's Day has already been done. <laughs> and there's a little picture of it. It really does look like a real guy. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. And it is. I mean, imagine. Oh, my I mean, God, it's awesome. Isn't it? Yeah, it's like, ugh. Like, I would totally like, oh, I'm surprised I would just try to dress him. Yeah, exactly. You put pants on him, yeah, dress him up, pants on him, change him up a little bit. Put a hat on. Well, it would be funny because he could stand there and be like, ah, like he's trying to choke him. Yeah, yeah. Sleep choker. Oh my goodness, that is creepy. Wow, kudos to whoever made that. That doesn't look real. I thought it was just literally like just some. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be like a bronze statue or something like. Just yeah, no, it's like a lifelike like, uh, guy yeah. type thing. You guys want to see what's in the? Uh, but say again, like it doesn't make any sense. Like, Anti gravity, like if you had him like upside down or something, like what? Like he yeah. was like flying away. No, it's away. new gravity. But that's why I mean, though. Like what, you know, be really that creepy. That's you know, because everybody's drawn is, to him. No, be really creepy if someone saw that. Be like, hey, that's my brother Franklin. He died last week. Wait a minute, and I know his body was donated to science. Yeah, he's been dead for days. <laughs> How did he die sleepwalking? I put a beer in his hand <laughs> in the in the snow. Yeah, he was sleepwalking as low as his underwear. In Wait, underwear. I'm away. <laughs> hey, ladies, I'm sure you're all gearing up for an intimate and romantic Valentine's mm -hmm. Day with your special someone, and to prepare for it, you have hit the gym to tone up your arms, your abs, and your buns. But are you neglecting your vagina? <gasps> Oh, sure, some of you religiously perform your Kegel exercises, but to really feel the burn, are you vaginizing? Vaginizing, or vagina weightlifting, <laughs> is the idea of holistic sex and relationship coach Kim Anami, who puts Kegels to shame by adding weights to her Jesus. routine. 
and you got to check out this video. It's pretty gross. Oh my God. Now, Miss uh, Anami claims that back in ancient China, sex was used not only for procreation, but also for holistic healing to be used in conjunction with medicinal herbs and teas to improve the spirit and the immune system. As part of this healing, the doctors would also prescribe genital strengthening via weightlifting for both men and women. This bitch is crazy. Now, the way this works for women is that they use a jade egg that has a hole drilled into it. They thread some string, rope, or chain through it, and then attach the other end to a weight of some sort. Like a log. <laughs> yeah. Well, they then insert the or egg car bumper. <laughs> into their vagina and attempt to lift the weight by tightening the vagina muscles within their pelvic area to lift and hold the weight off the floor. Just the way God intended. Exactly. Now, Mizunami says that with practice, a woman can actually move the egg around the vagina from the left side to the right side and back again. Yeah. and can even move the egg up and down inside the vagina. You can even get to the point where you can spin the egg around in your vagina. Now, it is recommended... <laughs> That's that what you... I call the scrambled egg. Yeah, really. <laughs> it is recommended that you start small before you work your way up to the log the woman in the video was lifting. Yeah. <laughs> but the benefits of vagina weightlifting are better orgasms for both partners, elimination of incontinence, and the ability to perform some really cool party tricks. Mm -hmm. So guys, with Valentine's Day just two days away, get that egg for that special girl and tell her to work out her flabby vagina. Um, I would actually <laughs> highly recommend this to all men. Get your uh, woman to be doing these things because... Someone's got to carry that wood. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. When you're out in the forest, and you got a log. All right, there. the tree's good. You got a log to come back. You want oh, a wood that for Christmas color. tree. It's all like, yeah. we got the tree, honey. Now take it back. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> it's like a wood chipper in there. I don't know what she's doing, but those Kegel things are working great. <laughs> I mean, oh, seriously, man. like, there's some things that just aren't supposed to, you know, occur, I guess, in nature, like. I don't know. I just that's no, weird. No, let, your and especially women, when you look at the woman too, you're really like, really like. Work out your vagina, ladies. I don't know. This woman does not look like. Uh, you know, I'm waiting to see that at the next uh, class. Okay, we have Pilates over here. We have spin cycle over here, and we have vagina sizing. But the weirdest part <laughs> is the vagina sizing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's run by Ted. What's up? Yeah, here it goes. Yeah. Okay, girls, here's your egg. Let's start small with maybe a, a bag of peas. <laughs> yeah, I know. We'll tie that like, to the end of there. How's that? Oh, working good. Oh, Judy, like looking It's going to be like those Iron Man challenges when they're like pulling cars with their teeth. Right, right. <laughs> so they'll yeah. be doing that with that. Oh, I can't wait. Maybe they should have a tug of war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Argh! The man was killed <laughs> by a vagina today. We just, came with the new, we just came up with the new reality show the for NBC, yeah. Tug of War. Yeah, where's yeah. that Where's that Olympic medal? <laughs> yeah, really? That, that, I, that I'd watch the Olympics for. <laughs> oh, here comes Russia again. So, uh, hey, over. what's on your mind? Ooh, my mind? Yeah. Steve's mind? You got a mind? I don't know, Steve. What's on your mind? Oh, apparently, wants a Wii U and is not... Oh, it's the same notes from last time. That's not what I had. Um, I had new notes this time. Actually, there was this great article. So, Australia banned the... Uh, What's it called? You call it Danny Noy. They banned uh, Noy. Grand Theft Auto, and they banned a lot of like violent video games because they just don't want it in their environment. Shocks. They're afraid that the it's going to corrupt their, you know, their their people. Their people. Well, there's a man who's taking that concept to a new level by called being called the Flower Pot Bandit. Uh, basically, what he d did was he's a gentleman who ran into a 7-Eleven with a chainsaw and held up the store but what made it even better was he wore like a flower pot on his head so they're calling him the flower pot bandit now they did catch him he was only he was like a 19 year old and he didn't uh he didn't get face any jail like i guess he's in jail right now but like he didn't cause any harm when he came in with the chainsaw and everything he ended up uh i guess like scaring the guy so bad that he just locked himself in the room so it worked out pretty well, yeah, but there's a pic there's a picture of him, but annoyed. that's something like a lot of people are saying like, hey, wait a minute, you could do that in Grand Theft Auto, like where you can go in like dressed up as whatever you want and like rob stores and stuff. So they're like, you know, how how could this man pull this off when it's like you ban this, those kind of games in your uh, in your establishment, I guess. So that's all that's on my mind. I just came to me because they were talking about it earlier today about this guy and the picture is pretty funny. Cool, Dan Anoif. This is Anoif. What do you got? What's on uh, your mind? Nothing. 
Nothing. Nothing. Just I like, right us, I like. We should go to Australia or Canada. Well, what bugs I, me? Okay. What bugs? Dad? What's on my mind yeah, is mind? actually in talking to uh, Lindsay's dad. Screw that guy. Uh, what I'm finding <laughs> is that the uh, it, it's not so much the post office; it's Congress not funding the post office adequately so that they can actually compete in the the UPS Federal Express world. Call that a package. This is a package. Okay. We had I had an issue with that too because I didn't get my dog's tags either. Called them and they end up having my address like in some employment building like right. down like nowhere near where we live like some yeah. they were like sending all our mail there and of course it's like an abandoned. Oh yeah, building. actually I just got something from another guy for Be- from Best Buy. Yeah. It's well, like, well right. you're gonna love this. I mean the besides the fact that they can't seem to put the mail in the right slot and they put my give my mail to other people. The other day I got something for your older brother. Okay. And what it was, it was from the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, which has a metro card, which he uses to ride the subways and buses in New Mm -hmm. York City. I figured, okay, they sent it here because this is where the billing address is. So I folded it back up, put it in a brand new envelope, sealed it, glued it, you know, taped it it so that it was secure, mailed it off to him. Now, the same time I mailed that to him, I also mailed a very thick packet of, of information that was sent to him. From the uh, and what I had to do is I actually had to add postage to that, which right? I to did. make sure it was enough. I made sure there was enough postage, so they both went in the same mailbox at the same day. And we'll probably pick up at the same right, time. same time, and they probably traveled together all the way to New We're York. Best friends. Well, I guess Woody. two days ago, I get a piece of paper in the mail from the post office with a little letter of apology saying, "Oh, we found this somewhere in the thing," and it had like. Ryan's name and our address and everything like that. And we said, oh, sometimes, you know, things get damaged, sometimes this and that. And I'm looking at it and says, okay, you had two pe- – I mean, first of all, this thing was thinner than the other one. So if the other one had trouble going through, like, their sorter, I would have yeah, expected whatever, that yeah. one to get messed up. But here what it was, you know, and the only thing I can think of is somebody in the post office grabbed it said, oh, wait, there's a card or something in here, ripped it open – and saw oh, yeah. that it was a Metro card. I figured, oh, great. I'm just going to use this to ride the subways and stuff. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we'll have to do something with this. And it's like, you know, now they have criminals, I guess, or alleged criminals working for the post office system who will actually check your mail for anything that may be of value and uh, steal it and then have the post office just send it back to you. Well, well you can definitely go to the – I had to do this today. So USPS.com slash postal – inspector right you can fill out a claims form and send it to them and they'll investigate it because i actually had to have them do that for us because we had like our aaron changed our address and i guess it messed up ours so it was like about a year ago and then like we were having problems with packages for christmas getting lost and getting misplaced and not arriving but still being charged for it and then recently like with my dog tags you know they were saying oh we send it to this address it's like okay well the dmv has my address the same you claim you have my address the same and it's been the same for three years right so how is it that magically when i'm getting mail that i've gotten numerous times from the the humane society and stuff going to somewhere else so i had them investigate it because it's like well it seems really shady that it's like the same information but quietly changed like my address is you know got like a one three in it and it had the same but it was just a little off and a little right, over yeah, here yeah. and you know now it's in this building that's like literally just down the street from me and in the back corner of a lot somewhere it's like well that's not where my stuff is and if you're sending it there clearly knowing that my stuff's supposed to go here yeah so you can do that and they'll definitely investigate it to the full because you, you know i mean you know it's it's bad enough that you know well first of all what i love too is I ended up getting something from my homeowners association to pay my bill. Right. So I went ahead. I used their envelope. I used their little insert, which has their address, name maybe. and address and stuff. I put my stamp on it and my check and made sure that everything came through the window the way it's supposed to. Mailed it. I got it back three days later saying this address is unknown. So it's like, okay. So I made a copy of the letter and the thing from the from from the post office. I put it back in a, another like a regular a regular envelope. envelope same address that they sent it to before, mailed that, and that one they got. Right. So what's the problem here, post office? Are you just that desperate for money that you're just going to start, making, know, this start making these things so people have to pay two and three times yeah. to get the mail from point A to point B? Well, that's lucky, yeah, because I hope you guys all do the same when you pay your bills online mostly. Yeah. I do. That same reason, because it's, like, it's again, ridiculous where, gosh forbid, I need something sent to us. Because, like, Lindsay even got her license plate finally, her, like – 
vanity yeah. plate. And luckily it came because like I told her, I said, well, the way our luck, someone's going to be driving around with your brand new uh, tag yeah. somewhere. Cause it's like, they're just, I don't know what they're doing. Well, that's just it. You know, if the, the, the problem that I have is that if the post office was smart, they would have provided, or they would have been continue to provide the level of service and support that you expect them to provide for the amount of money they're charging you to do this. But, you know, a couple of times, like very early on when I used to get my bills and they were delivered to somebody else's mailbox, I said, well, screw this. If I can do this online, I'm just going to have them send into my email because it comes right to my email. So now now you guys are losing that piece of change Mm -hmm. that used to come directly to my box is now going to my email. So you're not getting that that money anymore. Yeah. So, so not only that, you piss me off, you're pissing off hundreds of other people do the right. same thing. Which is why now a lot of companies are like, go paperless and we'll donate. We'll build a tree or we'll make a right. you know, vagina or log. That's what I do. I build a tree. Yourself. Yeah. What? Stamps.com do it yourself. That's true. I don't think we were associated with them not anymore. Not with them anymore. I think oh. we should get it back, though. I think that would be, a, especially with this uh, mail crap. Well, the problem but is if you do Stamps.com, the mail support. still is going to screw it up when they send it. So basically, it's Stamps.com. You're going to have to pay for it once, and then when it gets returned to you saying that, well, the address you sent it to wasn't right, please put the same amount of postage on again. <laughs> please and send pay it, it again. Exactly back to the same place you sent it, but this time we'll deliver. Fine, Dad. I promise. Fine, Dad. We'll do it your way. We'll burn <laughs> down all the post offices. I that promise. sounds good. Why? Well, the only good like thing the post like... office will do, the post office is the only entity in the United States that will deliver mail to another P.O. box. And I found out, too, that they are the only ones allowed to mail anything to the military. So if you are in the military, you're only allowed to go through the United States Postal Office. Oh, that's There's a, a woman who put a, together a box and it was shipped it through, like, UPS. Uh, this happened over the holidays. So it was, like, not only, like, $500 worth of gifts for her. And yeah, the yeah, I remember you kids, talked about that last time. Because they were over, uh, whatever, they were over in, like, Iraq, I think. Guam. They never got the gifts. And, like, obviously, like, someone's got them because uh, USPS was just like, oh, we lost it. It's like, nah, I doubt it. You probably opened it and thought, oh, I could use this. And then just claimed it got lost. So Yeah, thanks for the iPod, guys. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, so then, like, the woman ended up just fa- faxing them, like, Western Union, like, check, like, a money. And she's yeah. like, it just sucks. This is, like, way after the holiday. Here's cash. Like, good. You know, yeah, that you're not going to have a little kid and stuff, so they thought, like, oh, stuff that the kid could use and everything. So, I don't know. Like, if they Kids were smart, like, like cash. start, I mean, like, just keep using U- UPS and FedEx. I mean, like, they're, they're consistently good. Yeah, at least, you know, at least the stuff gets They there. have a standard and stuff. Like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's called private business. It's called a profit margin. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what this country is all built upon. We're always like, oh, the private market and all oh, the, you know, the commerce. Yep. And, you know, so it's like, why not just go that route? Well, let's move along to the review section of the show at which point somebody goes ahead and they give me a huge big announcement no i'm not doing that okay fine i'll do it you said you would always you was going to put music in it anyway so well here we go reviews on movies and at the library is going to kind of review stuff yeah i don't know if i could follow that that was phenomenal oh my god Anyway, today's movie review is brought to you by your local public library, which is where we got it from. This take that was, post office. Yeah, take that post office. <laughs> yeah, Who needs suck you? It. <laughs> That's their new slogan. Yeah. United States Postal Service. Suck, suck it. it. Yeah. We may we may get it there. Yeah, we, if we feel like it. Yeah, we may get it there the first time. <laughs> Undamaged. Or they should just say, or they should say, fifty-fifty yeah. chance we'll do the it right U.S. The first Postal time. Service. Yeah, three times a charm. <laughs> hey, uh, U.S. Postal <laughs> Service. Now we'll read it to you. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this this last week, your mother and I decided to pick up Copper season two from BBC America. Oh wait! Oh wait! Oh wait! Now, to be honest, we thought Copper was only one season. And we should have left it at that for good reason. Uh, you don't the, rock me copper. The copper series. <laughs> what about me silver? I got some gold for you. My too. favorite Not band based in Nickelback, England. <laughs> it's in New York City. Meet my blame, 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 blame. blame. <laughs> meet, meet my, because he said BBC, that's why. Meet my friend Nickelback over here. I love Nickelback. <laughs> And not already, back, already know? this show's better yeah. than the copper, isn't it? Actually, it's better than the one we watched. <laughs> so tell us all about this. Now, the copper. Copper, copper series is set in the Five Points neighborhood of New York City in the 1860s, focusing on a rugged, young Irish cop who was forced to navigate his unruly and dangerous cop immigrant neighborhood while interacting with the uptown Manhattan crowd and the black community. Oh, 
Now, season one was actually pretty good, and it looked like it was ending appropriately. And when we found out there was a season two, we picked it up the library to see what where they would take the story. That was a big mistake. We took it to Corpoville. The first few episodes of season two are actually quite violent. And while that may have been true for the time, it was still a little bit hard to take. Once the story started moving, though, they started to bring in other people, it seemed out of nowhere, to interact and cause friction in the show. Still, we pushed on. The story seemed to get lamer and lamer until the final episode, where we wa- where they wasted three quarters of the show, having the three main characters chase after John Wilkes Booth, only to not catch him but relive their experience during the war that we could have cared less about. It's what you're never going to catch me. I'm (laughs) Corporal William Booth. (laughs) Now, when they finally do come back to New York City, we find out that certain allies and friends have been removed and or disposed of, setting the scene for season three. Fortunately, BBC America canceled the show. I wonder why. So we will not have to endure oh. any more lame stories. You just have to make up your own thing. Now we I bring guess. back the corporate hour. Well, the whole thing is, you know, <laughs> the guy comes back and it's like, uh, you know, this one whorehouse that he's friendly with the main whore, I guess. Hello, whore. She's gone. The bartender's killed. Anyway, the other show I watched this week <laughs> was Wilkes, bitch. Sherlock Holmes, season three, episode two oh, and yeah. three. Oh, yeah. Starring Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock Holmes and Martin Freeman as Dr. Watson. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, that is British. We can't do it. Now now you can do those things. Now, Have you seen this show, Copper? Yeah, it's fantastic, Sherlock. I can't believe it. I grew a mustache this season. But he shaved it off. <laughs> oh, he did. In episode two, Dr. There's Watson gets married to his betrothed Mary. Oh. And Sherlock is the best man. <gasps> Although Sherlock tries his best to make a speech that is witty and heartfelt, this is Sherlock Holmes, so it's a bit awkward. During the wedding, though, there is mention of a case that they both worked on that has yet to be solved. And lo and behold, they get a chance to solve it at the wedding. (gasps) Guess what? I figured out what happens in season three of Copper. (laughs) Now, that would be a good trick, Sherlock. Now, episode three is actually a mind blower. And it was so good, we saved it to watch it again. It ends up with Holmes being arrested for murder, which he does commit, but also reintroduces us to a former acquaintance of Holmes and Watson, who we very much look forward to seeing more of in season mm. four. Interesting. Marty Arden? Mm. Yeah, that's my guess, Moriarty. Because obviously Moriarty if he came back, back, then it's like, well, Moriarty had to well, come Well, it's back. great, because what happens, I'm going to tell you anyway, whether you see the show or not, Yeah. what happens is because Sherlock kills this guy that he absolutely hates and... And actually, everybody's glad he kills him, but they have to keep well, up appearances. Well, obviously, they have to do it by the uh, book. They were supposed to be sending Sherlock to the uh, to do something with like a terrorist ring, hmm. but there was a good chance they they told him flat out, "There's no way you're coming back. This is kind of right. Like like you a, have to be a gone. suicide mission. You know, you're not coming back." So he says goodbye to Watson, and without telling him that that's what's going to happen. So meanwhile, he gets on the plane, and they're on the way taking off. And just as he takes off, all of a sudden, all these people in different shows, the TVs go blank, and it's. Uh, all you keep hearing is, oh, you miss me? Oh, do you miss me? Oh, do you miss me? And that's, and all you see are these people eyes that get really big. It's just, oh my God, he's on every channel. And you still don't know what it is. And then finally it's like they, you know, so his brother who's, um, who actually writes the show, the guy, uh, Mycroft. Right, Mycroft. Mycroft is, is yeah, actually. He's the, I didn't realize that. He's he, actually he actually the writes him. the show too, but he also plays a part of his brother. He gets on the phone and he calls Sherlock and he goes, well, you're going, we're going to reroute you and have you come back and falls forgiven. He goes, why? What's going on? He goes, he's back. And he goes, oh, and you still don't know. So all of a sudden you see Sherlock come back. And then at the very last second, they show like Piccadilly Circus with all the TVs. And he's on all. And you see Moriarty up there going, oh, did you miss me? Oh, did you miss me? Oh, nice. So it's like, oh, like he's so like good. The whole thing oh, he's now. so good. There's, I mean, some of the scenes that he's been in where, I mean, he just looks like a, a lunatic. He really does. Well, he's that's just, what I like about it, though. He plays it like he's insane, but he still has like that. A genius, yeah. Genius to it where he's still just like, no, we're going to do like this. Or like, like I love that whole part, like in the second uh, season finale. When they they were on the roof, and all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, I expected more out of you." And then right. when finally, like, he sees like what he's prepared to do, like he gets almost like excited, like he's like, "Oh yeah, like you you get yeah, it, yeah, you get yeah. it." Like finally, like you're showing me like the true Sherlock. So I thought that was cool, like how they're playing it up, like it's 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 like they're equal, but they're not, and there's like that good mix of 
you know, just it's right. a really good show. Like I always like that's the one I started watching. I watched a little bit of Elementary with uh, yeah. Lucy Liu, which I get, which I found it was interesting. So there's a play that Benedict Cumberbatch did called Frankenstein, and what was neat about it is at the beginning of the of the uh, play, like either he would be the monster or this other guy would be the monster, and they'd alternate between him being Frankenstein right. or the creator, like Frankenstein's monster. They go back and forth every uh, every show, and then what it turns out is the other guy who was playing either Frankenstein or the monster is the guy who stars in Elementary as Sherlock Holmes. Oh, okay, that's cool. So they cool. actually yeah. played off each other in that, and then lo and behold, when they did the Syndicate show, yeah, when they asked BBC could we do the show, he actually recommended, oh, you should use this guy as like your Sherlock because he's a really good actor. So it's kind of neat how like it all goes full circle and it was all like due to benedict you know same thing like yeah yeah oh I, did you miss me and it's a did cool pro me? it's a cool call uh, back it's really cool they did it because they said sometimes like people would show up and i guess like he's in like this contraption and then whoever was the monster when you first go into the show there's the guy in the contraption then he comes out and he's the monster so sometimes depending when people showed up if it was him up there they're like oh it's him <laughs> you know like we wanted the other yeah, guy yeah, to be yeah. the monster so sometimes you're up there and he's like oh you know you bastards <laughs> you know so it's pretty neat so that's cool. I can't wait. I have to go check that out now. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely worth uh, worth the watch. Because they're long too. They're still like an hour, two hours almost episodes. Yeah, it's like, like a it's two like hour, small, almost a two like hour episode. Movies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you figure they're like uh, they. What do they do? They did three three a season. So you figure there's like three movies a season. Yeah. Yeah. Because regular movies are about an hour and a half yeah, now hour and stuff half, like that. So yeah. Are. But that's yeah they they did a well, really good job. The first two seasons are on Netflix right now. Yep. And then um, the other one just premiered, I guess, on PBS. Yeah. Or BBC, yeah, probably those two. PBS, masterpiece. Well, you can also see Copper in reruns. Oh, Copper is coming at you live <laughs> in 3D. Oi, 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 silver, oi, oi, gold, oi, oi. Now it's me, Copper. <laughs> that was fun. Fighting around the world. <laughs> Get here, Caesar. Well, now, once again, our significant no. others are texting us, wondering where we are oh. and if we are indeed podcasting from Sochi. You want to watch Copa? <laughs> so as not to disappoint the ones we love and our significant others, we will say goodbye and thank you for listening to our show. We know you have many choices when listening to podcasts on the Internet, and we appreciate your laziness by not looking for something else to listen to. We hope that you not only laughed today, but learned an important life lesson that will make you a better individual and a more caring human being. After all, that is what we strive for each and every podcast. If our incredibly annoying bi-weekly begging for you to purchase your Amazon.com goods by going through the Socially Awkward Studios website has not yet convinced you to do so, then please, please, please... Access the link to Amazon.com only from the SociallyAwkwardStudios.com site, or you will never, ever be happy. Not well, next week, we'll just be talking about <laughs> yeah, Not in life, <laughs> not in love, not in your lifetime. Trust me, I know. We have tricked Amazon into sponsoring our network, and in doing so, we get a portion of everything you buy from them through our site. It adds nothing to the cost of the product to you, but it does allow us to make this plea for your help every show. To be honest, I haven't seen a dime of the money Amazon supposedly floats us, so for all I know, this whole thing is a scam. Again, thank you for your support. <laughs> if you would like to send us a tweet, look for the at the idiot section and tweet away. Hashtag Corpa. Kindly let us know how we are doing, and if you would like to hear other segments on the show, any and all tweeters are welcome. Also, please like us on Facebook at the idiot section. Even if liking us goes against your principles as an upstanding pillar of society. One day, when the idiot section is on the cover of Time magazine, you can say you liked us from the beginning. Besides, one day you might only like us, but love us. Hey, it could happen. It is Valentine's Day. It is. Miracles don't happen on Valentine's Day. And someday www.theidiotsection.com will no longer be under construction, so you will be able to see some of the videos and JPEGs that we refer to on the show. We will also use the site to post links to our other shows, which are as equally earth-shattering and mind-numbing as this one. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks. Oi!
This has been another fine production of the 4i Radio Network. For more great shows, check out www.4iradio.com. Oi!